place from retired and living the dream. Today's video is going to be about this one. I did a video called Retirement Pension Losing Money Why? And this is about the, the British people actually losing money to the government by the pensions being frozen, living in a country outside of the UK where they don't have a reciprocal agreement so therefore your pension is frozen. Now this was a popular video, I've had over two and a half thousand views on it and I've had many 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 questions and I've actually got some answers. So many people came up with solutions and statistics and how you can do this and say nothing and live at your sister's house, live at your brother's house, say nothing, but that's not really an answer. So I phoned up the pensions department and I got some answers. So I'm going to give some answers here and some phone numbers. I've looked around the website and you end up chasing your own tail. So I phoned up the pensions department in England and the answers are, are quite interesting really and it's not really that difficult. So first of all, I'm going to go through the process of who I called and I was passed from one person to another, to another, to another. And I was quite shocked really as to who really knew the answers. And it was a bit of a, oh, I'll have to ask somebody else. And this is the pensions department in England who was supposed to know everything. Now, as I say, the website doesn't give you direct answers. It just sends you around chasing your own tail. So, so the people that are called is in the futures pensions department and again I'll give you this telephone number here so for those people who are not claiming a pension yet and want to ask questions these are the people that you need to to ring not the pensions department because you aren't claiming your pension yet it's the futures pensions department again on this telephone number so of course I'm not claiming my pension so I just told them that I was almost to retirement age so I got some questions to ask them and because I was living outside of England, I explained to them what my situation was going to be, is that I was never going to be resident in the UK once I've retired. And I'm selling my house, selling everything. So therefore, as a resident in England, I wouldn't be resident in England. I'd be traveling the world. So therefore, I wanted to know how it was possible to be able to claim the rises. So the future pensions department told me to ring the international pension centre. So they give me the telephone number and again I'm going to put the telephone number up here. So for those people who are living abroad and got any pension queries these are the people that you need to call. It's the International Pension Centre and as opposed to the the future pensions that's a free for number the International Pension Centre is a paid number and you have to pay to talk to them. So having been put on to hold for another 30 minutes whilst you're, you're on hold listening to the lovely music, waiting for a representative to answer you, I got talking to a, a nice lady at the pension centre and I told her what my situation was, the fact that I'm travelling around the world but I want to be able to claim for my pension increases. So what would I need to do? So I was asking this lady as to how you go about being able to claim your pension not being a resident in the UK and she said oh I've never heard this one before she said I'll have to go and ask my supervisor so she asked the supervisor oh you just need to make a telephone call and, and tell us where you're living we can tell you whether you can get your pensions or not and I said that's not really the answer that I want to know so I want to know what the process is what you need to have documentary wise and also the process of being able to do it so again, put on hold, and she came back 10 minutes later after talking to her supervisor, and then she was very informative. I didn't actually speak to her supervisor, but the lady I gathered got all the information that was requested. Now, my situation that I explained that I was not living in the UK and would likely never, ever live in the UK, but if I did return to the UK, I needed to live 185 days in the country of UK and I suggested to her that how can I be resident in the UK if I don't have any houses I don't have any properties I just return back to the UK for the for the pension increase another oh, uh, oh well I don't know about that so put me on hold again for another five minutes and then she came back and she said what I needed to do and this is the case no matter where you are in the world because of, of the situation that you're non-resident 
anywhere in the world, you have to prove then that you've been into that country, a reciprocal country, for the stated amount of time, 185 days. So this would be proof that you entered the country. Now let, let's say, because I live in Thailand, I'm going to use the Philippines as, a, as an example that because the Philippines is a reciprocal country. And I would sooner go and spend 185 days in the Philippines than return back to the UK for 185 days. So they would require a copy of my passport to say that I entered into the Philippines on a, a certain date and my exit stamp. They need a copy of that also and obviously that amount of time is 185 days or you can do a three month and a three month. As long as all the days add up to more than 185 days in any one year period and the period being from April of the 6th to April the 6th, which is the UK tax year, then you can claim your full pension, or your full increase, should I say. But whilst you're in the country, the minute you set foot into the Philippines, so for instance, if you haven't had a rise for three or four years, and let's say it's 10% rise, so the minute you inform the pensions department, you can start claiming that new increment. And again, it's on this number. This is what you need to ring to tell the International Pension Centre that you are living in a country that's reciprocal with the UK. So therefore, you can claim that extra whatever percent that you haven't been claimed for all of these years. And this goes on until you leave the country. Then it reverts back to as it was normal before you went to that country and you got the rise. Unless you've been living there for the 185 days and then you get the full allowance. Sounds complicated, I know, I know. But if you want to hear it from the horse's mouth, give this number a call and they will go into the details of what you need to do and what you don't need to do. So, what proof do you need to be able to, if I went to the Philippines? Again, this is all, that I, all the information that I got from the lady I was speaking to at the pension, International Pension Centre. And this was at the claims department of the International Pension Centre. And she says, photocopy of entry into the Philippines. I don't need to have a residency certificate. All I need is proof of my hotel stays in the Philippines or a tenancy agreement. If I've got a ten tenancy agreement for the six months, a photocopy of that. And also photocopies of the flight tickets entering the Philippines and exit the Philippines. So basically, take photocopies of absolutely everything. So as I say, I'll put a list here with all the reciprocal countries. So if you don't want to live in the Philippines for the six months, there's other ways and means of doing it. Here, again, I'll put the list of reciprocal countries with regard to where you can, you can live and get your increase as long as you live there for 185 days. But it doesn't have to be the same country, it can be a mixture. As long as the days add up to more than 185 days in that calendar year, you can get your rise. So for instance, you could go to Turkey for three months and then go to live in England and then go to wherever you're going to do the rest of your travelling. If you're clever, you can actually get two years rises by doing one, one trip. So for instance, for those people who were not getting their extra rise this year, and been missing the rises for the previous years. Next April, it looks as if it's going to be set to rising between 8 and 10% of your pension. So if you do a visit next year, after April the 6th, that starts to be at 185 days, the minute you inform the tax department where you are, as long as you're in a reciprocal country, that increase, all them increases that you've, you've missed for the past how many years you haven't been able to get your pension because it's been frozen, gets paid straight away. So for those people who've missed a year, say you're going to get 3.1% 3, 3 from this year, the rise. So instantly you're getting 3%, and then April, it looks like it's going to go between 8 and 10%. So let's take 10% at the maximum. So then that means you're going to get a rise of 13%. So 13% of your pension is actually worthwhile doing it. So the way that I would look upon it, it's a, a subsidised holiday. Okay, I'm going to have to pay a little bit more for the holiday, but in effect, the government is subsidising my holiday. 
and it's only for six months and after six months I've got that extra 13% pay rise for the rest of my life. And again, if, if it goes up another 5 or 10% the year before, just do it every two or three years. It's better in your pocket than being stuck in the government's pocket. But, saying that, things are moving along in England with regard to they're trying to abolish the frozen pension. Now, there's over 500,000 pensioners that have had their pensions frozen. And it's unjust, and many, many people say it's unjust. And I think it is unjust also. So I hope this video has been informative. These are the numbers I'm going to give you for the future pensions, for the International Pension Centre. Give these telephone numbers a call if you want to know from the horse's mouth. Now I've gone from pillar to post to try and find these numbers and these are the numbers that will be beneficial to you and help you right from the start. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to the channel, be very, very nice. And from Les, retired and living the dream. Till the next video, bye for now.